We need a lot more uh, brainstorming, a lot more problem solving, and many more solutions being brought to bear on the challenges of sustainable development. Within the next couple of generations at the latest, we have to overhaul the energy system of the world to uh, make it a low carbon energy system. Uh, we're going to have to revamp agriculture uh, for more sustainable and more secure and resilient food supplies, especially in an era where the climate is already changing. We're going to have billions of people coming into cities, both old and new cities, and the quality of life in those cities is going to uh, have to improve and accommodate to those people not in slums and not in desperation, but in sustainable, resilient, and high quality of life ways. This will involve new ways of doing things. Uh, in many cases, we can only see in a very hazy way how we're going to get to where we need to go. Uh, it's going to involve a lot of early stage pre-commercial demonstration. It's going to have to involve a lot of global awareness and acceleration of public investments around sustainability. My feeling uh, has been that the formal processes that we have for negotiating on climate change, for example, are more legal processes or diplomatic processes. They're not very practical uh, processes. They don't say what to do. They say who's going to do it, uh, what's binding, what isn't binding, uh, what's uh, monitorable, all the legalities, but not the practicalities of what to do. And what's different in Kenya or China or India or the United States or Sweden. In other words, how does the local context, the local ecology, the local environment, the resource base, the level of development and so forth affect the choices to be made? Much too little discussion about that. The Sustainable Development Solution Network is aiming to rev up the global problem solving by creating global networks of knowledge around key areas, energy, food, uh, urban uh, design and uh, urban planning, uh, conservation, uh, the oceans uh, management and so forth. And then for that global network to empower local problem solvers. Uh, that could be local companies working with government. It could be uh, in many cases, and I hope it is, local universities uh, to help advise their metropolitan government where they're located how to become more resilient, how to raise the quality of life, how to improve public health, how to uh, have a uh, more efficient energy system. And so it's going to be an interplay, uh, some global leadership, uh, local engagement, academia, as well as the business community. A business has a lot of technology. Business has the best management systems. But business often isn't playing the role of helping to provide the public framework to understand what's happening. It's trying to sell a product here and there. Uh, and maybe for pre-commercial technologies, uh, businesses have ideas, but they can't do uh, that pre-commercial work by themselves, except if it's in a public policy framework. A lot of businesses have contacted me very quickly uh, after the announcement of the network saying, we want to be involved. Uh, businesses in key sectors, in the energy sector, in the infrastructure sector, in transport, in food production. Uh, and I'm saying, wonderful, we need you inside this network, especially your technology departments, so that we can see uh, what's already available, what's on the horizon, what's a good idea but far from commercial right now uh, that requires a public effort to bring towards commercialization. Those are the kinds of issues that this network will grapple with. I think that companies, uh, especially the leading companies, uh, know that if the world is going to get through this harrowing passage uh, of instability, and that's got to be good for business, but it's also good for their children, good for uh, the world, uh, they have to play a role. The businesses recognize who holds technology that can make a difference? That's business. Who knows how to manage at a global scale? That's business. Uh, now, businesses know, the best ones, that therefore they have unique talents and skills that they have to bring to the table that may be good,
commercially for them in the long term, but in the short term are simply core to their responsibility because no one else has that kind of expertise. And the best businesses and the best business leaders recognize that. There is another side of business, though. Uh, we see it in the United States. It's the relentless lobbying. It's trying to gut environmental regulation. It's trying to find a way around uh, basic uh, decency and controls. Why is it that so much of the world's wealth is hidden uh, right now in offshore tax havens and so forth under anonymous uh, company names and so forth and then buying up land in an irresponsible way in poor countries and so on? It's because the other side of business is that a lot of business is not being sustainable. A lot of business uh, is uh, trying to hide wealth or trying to take quick advantage not to play for the long term. So part of the goal of this network is to help encourage the best side of business, uh, the unique side, best technologies, best management practices, global reach, and therefore a global capacity to uh, contribute to major problem solving. And my observation has been that those businesses are not at the table right now. They're in the negotiating corridor sometimes for specific regulations, but when it comes to global problem solving, too many diplomats and lawyers, in my view, nothing against them, but they can't solve this. We need technology. We need world-class engineering. We need world-class management, of course, engaged with science and with civil society. The U.S. Uh, 40 years ago was an environmental leader, a pioneer in the Environmental Protection Agency, signed under Richard Nixon, of all presidents. Uh, and uh, the U.S. you could count on to play a leadership role, but the U.S. has retreated from that, never signed on to the Kyoto Protocol, uh, drags its feet on climate change. Uh, we have uh, one political party, uh, the Republican Party, that basically denies human-induced climate change. The other party doesn't want to talk about it. Uh, when one asks why, it's pretty clear the power of the fossil fuel lobby, uh, oil, uh, natural gas, and coal, is so overwhelming. The politicians are absolutely terrified to say a word about this. But this is quite devastating from a global point of view. If the world waits for the U.S. to lead on climate change, we're going to go right off uh, the, the edge. The world has to move forward. Uh, and the, has to pull the U.S. along. Well, I'm, I'm wishing for a world that will share the aspirations to make uh, the world prosperous, uh, fair, and sustainable. And I think uh, we can actually see that that can happen. Uh, in a world of such diversity, uh, we need shared aspirations. Uh, and as John Kennedy said uh, 50 years ago, if we cannot end now all our differences, at least we can help make the world safe for diversity. And that's what we need to do. And that's what uh, the goal of sustainable development can help make possible.